You ready for it? Come on, buddy. Let's go. Come on. Breakfast. Let's go, bud. Come on. I forgot to vacuum. Don's covering me. I do see Panther down in the front yard, but he's thinking about whether or not he wants to come. He's to the right of the Japanese maple, but behind some ferns. Hopefully he'll come in a minute. Get him up on the porch where I know for sure he's safe. There he comes. He's just sleeping down in the creek bed. And he seems to be moving and doing okay. Come on, buddy. Good morning. All right. We're loaded up and off. I'm going to start driving today, but I highly doubt I'm going to get through the whole day and do all the driving. we get some good safety score miles in first thing, though, Donnie. Well, you know, that's a good idea. And that way, when I get lower the score, you won't have a chance to make it back up before we get home. Well, I was thinking it'd round out either way, beginning okay. or end. <laughs> Ruby says it's 63, and as you can see, it's quite cloudy this morning. Clouds are fine, just hopefully it won't rain on the event up there because um, it's pretty much all outside. All the vendors are set up and the food and... So we really need for, obviously I want to have Ruby open and do the light show and we really need it not to rain. Don't care about the clouds. We're running a little behind this morning. That's all right. I don't think I can make up the minutes. So we'll just uh, be nice and safe out here. I only needed to change the battery and the dash cam button for about three weeks now. Thanks, Donnie. You're welcome. Don's playing around with the waypoints and um, it defaulting to putting the one you add, the stop that you add at the top is not the way people think. People right. think I'm starting here and my next stop is this one and my next stop is this one. So if it always put it at the bottom, yeah, that would probably really work out most of the time, but it putting it at the top is the default. Right. And then you have to go back in there and edit it and slide it down. See, these are the things some of us owners could really help Tesla with if they would let us get involved in the test and development cycle. Because I don't think there's any reason why the person couldn't put that on the stack at the bottom all the time instead of at the top all the time. But what do I know as a programmer? All right, so Don figured out one way to um, add the supercharger. Show us. Yeah, so you you know you touch your screen and you click your lightning sign. You find your supercharger. You just simply touch it, and then you click on Add, and it adds it to the trip, and then you can move it up and down. Right. It's, then you can slide it into the correct slot, the right yep. order for the trip. Yeah. Way cool. But nothing works from the list on the left. There's no way to add it from there. Right. And I guess yesterday I was so focused on looking for the address that possibly I didn't see the add button. But I still think it would be nice up in the navigation search bar if you could just type in some convention, the name of the supercharger and the word supercharger or something like that um, versus having to look up the address and type it in. But it's a little better than I thought it was. So we're on 64 East now. Ruby says we're going to get to the supercharger in Halifax at 8.53 a.m. And we need to charge for 30 minutes to get us back home this afternoon. We actually have one more stop. We're not bringing Johnny home with us. We're moving him to another student's house to work on um, the American History Project. And um, I just wasn't comfortable with him. And so we, and Johnny says it's about 20 minutes from the school. I think it's north. It's away from the house. So we probably could use just a smidge more charge than, um, than it's telling us to get in Halifax. But we always have the option of just shooting into the North Hill Supercharger in Raleigh. Yes, I understand. She was upset my wheel went on the yellow line. All right, we got out of the city thick traffic out here on 64 and we're just cruising now. So it's 57 minutes and 68 miles to the supercharger. 
had a fake Ford collision warning at exit 459. Wow, I did a bug report on the erroneous Ford collision warning and it actually gave me a message to let me know that the bug report was collected and thanked me for my feedback. It's been a while since I did a bug report. I would say that's a big improvement because you never used to sort of know if they really got it or not. It's going across the entire complex. Don's on a conference call. But if you're on, on uh, uh, individual on controllers, to the you can only see what it's it been easy about. Easy on autopilot. So again, that gets back to that. All right, it's at the back of the mobile station. Oasis and Dunkin' Donuts. Woo! Yeah, this is brand new. Yeah, I agree. And there's also another charger here too. I'll scope that out. Priorities, exchange coffee before nine o'clock conference call. Ooh, pretty. I didn't quite hit the bump stop, but I'm close. I'm real close. Come on, I pushed the button. I did. Throbbing is good. Not orange is good. Green is good. All right. I'm just putting all the stuff up here now. A little tiny screen. Hundred and five kilowatts, hundred and twenty kilowatts, hundred and forty kilowatts, hundred and fifty six kilowatts. Well, we had seventy four miles left, so we're not real low on charge. Our state of charge is not real low. Hundred and sixty. All right, says so time to continue trip. Twenty five minutes. She had told us she wanted us to charge for thirty. So that's good. Um, yeah, I don't need supercharging tips, but thank you. And um, we're good. It's 8.58. You know, if we get over to the solar farm by 8.45, I mean um, 9.45, that's good. So for, we got 45 minutes and she only wants us to charge 30 is what I'm trying to tell you. And the Center for Energy Education is only uh, nine miles away, but it says 33 minutes. I think that's wrong. I think it'll recalculate We that. don't need the air conditioner going. I just turned it off. Our um, efficiency coming up here wasn't super good at uh, 75 mile an hour, 377 watt hours per mile. That's up there a little bit, even for Ruby. You know, her lifetime average since the MCU upgrade is in the 350s, I think. I think it's still in the 350s. Oh, three, uh, 340s now. So like I said, but that we, you know, we're high, traveling at a higher rate of speed than I am when I'm going back and forth to school. All right, now that Don's back with the car, not that I couldn't have locked and gone in, but I just, it's just easier to wait for him. I will, um, I will let him uh, stay with the car while I go. But that's, yeah, I guess we can't get the big charging screen over here anymore. I don't know, you know, maybe if I, yeah. It just doesn't show us all the niceness over here, but at least we get it over here still. Cause I'm not sure on Jules, it's a little harder to see. So 10 minutes to continue trip. I got done a midnight brew. He didn't have time to go through the counter. We're still getting 80 kilowatts, which is not awesome, but is okay. Ah, uh, okay. I actually had read about this. It's a charge point charger, but it's sponsored by the Roanoke Electric Cooperative. 50 kilowatt DC. Okay. And Chatamo and okay this is where I need Kyle or Don but anyway 
There is one other non-Tesla charger here. That's awesome. Have trash cans at this location. Have a dog station at this location and even a place where you could throw the ball or walk your dog. This guy's gonna mow the lawn. Okay. Make all that noise. Stir up all that dust near my clean car, but okay. I'm keeping the window closed because the lawnmowers nearby are pretty loud. But what I wanted to say is I just now realized that these are prefab supercharger installs. Um, the piece of cement, the four chargers. They've added the signs. Those are bolted in. And so there's one, two, three here. I guess this is 12 stalls. All right, it shows us getting home at 28% now. It's 9.35, it's time to scoot. I got a little extra because we have one stop that's not being calculated. Did I really have to stop charging it in the car? Okay, I didn't think so. So we've got 215 miles now. I have to say that I am really annoyed that um, I can't change the charge limit inside the car anymore while we're charging. If you want to bump it up, which I did from 80 to 100, just to sit there longer um, so you don't occur, accrue idle fees, you, you got to go to the app now. That's weird. Now Ruby's telling me my charge port's open. Let's not start having that um, problem again. Thankfully, I can close it without having to get my Seat belt off and get back out. Well, conveniently, we don't have to get back on 95 to get over there. It says we can just take this road and then a couple more turns and we'll be at the solar farm. The Center for Energy Education, affectionately known as the solar farm. To be clear, we're not upset that Ruby's getting dirty. She's been clean for almost two weeks now. Dawn certainly feels, and I do too, that we got our our hard work is worth out of that last uh, car wash yeah. but for the kids today it's a little sad that we've got this and the event organizers it's a little sad and I don't see any heavy rain it's all going to be light and misty and hopefully it won't be the whole time so but I don't see any thunderstorms or heavy rain so that's that's good we're just making a little jog over to the solar farm without having to get back out on I-95, which I would prefer to do the country road anyway. Solar panels, you know we gotta be getting there. As a matter of fact, I think we're supposed to turn right here on, uh, can't take that road. That was kind of funny. She tried to tell me to turn there. Um, no. <laughs> and it wasn't even the right name of the road. That's yeah. pretty funny. Yeah, that's. Well, now you know you're really in the country. Right. She's rerouted us up here on hopefully some regular roads. Right. All right. So technically, we're seven minutes later than I would have been my absolute preference for arrival. But as long as there aren't ten school buses here already, we'll be good. The school buses they usually show up late to see where Mosine wants us. Oh, there are school buses here already. Bummer. Yeah, but it looks like they just got here. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I would go there. Right. Mosian often wants us right up front, but um, Don and I kind of like to be over here on the side of the building. It's just good for Ruby's safety and less dirt. And So this is an old airport. So we'll just go put Ruby where we want her. We know where we want her. I think they put this sign here just for us. That is so cute. At the pond, your fountain would be powered by solar. Very cool. I miss my ponds from my other house. Looks like they've all got their giddy bags. Greensville County Public School. There are several counties worth of schools coming and see all the exhibits are back here around the courtyard area which I will walk and check out in a little while. But Don, or Don's gone inside. One of us usually tries to stay with the car. ECSU drone program. I had heard that learning how to operate a drone 
uh, was a new educational opportunity for kids. My son's uh, 17 and thinking colleges now. Um. Okay, I want to go back to college now. Yeah. So this gentleman was telling me that they can do like assessments after a storm, go in with the drone, that the van is solar powered, which you can't see the cells on top, but um, and the students get to go out in the field and practice and learn and Okay, I'm ready to go back to school. That sounds like fun to me. Yeah, we're in the process right now. We're trying to integrate the counter drone program because as good as drones can be, bad guys have figured out how to use them for bad things. Sure. And so we're trying to um, get a radar system to put out here so we can actually track and identify the drones. Okay. Do I know you from somewhere? You know me. <laughs> Did you find Mozine and the rest of the girls in there to say hello to? Okay, well, I'm sure she's doing last minute prep stuff, and we're self sufficient. We don't really need any guidance. So, yeah. So, you need to go check out the ECU drone program van over there. It's pretty cool. They have a whole course now on how to. Right, we'll go in and do damage assessments after storms. I know, it's like it just really sucks that it's raining. All right, it stopped sprinkling on us, so Don's wiping down anything inside that got a little damp. damp. We're disappointed to learn that there was going to be an electric school bus here today out of High Point, and um, they sent the bus that didn't have the right firmware update. It's a brand new bus with some uh, right, test, yeah. test software on it, and it won't charge with the charge point charger that we saw up at the Oasis, and um, it's not going to make it over here. So that's really sad. It's nothing wrong with the bus and the other buses work with the charge point charger just fine. But that particular bus is just not got the right firmware on it. So maybe we'll stop and see it on the way out because he's either waiting for a flatbed or he's waiting for somebody to come with the right computer software to, to uh, install on the bus so it can charge from that charger, which probably would be the right thing to do, right? All right, we had enough fun with fart mode. You know, if you got high school kids around, you have to demonstrate fart mode. I'm a little worried about the wind. We've had a couple of gusts that blew the doors too. That's how windy it is. It gets better. Just give it a second. I promise you're gonna go. Oh. <gasps> <laughs> Go Ruby, go! <laughs> I love my car. Every day I love my car. <laughs> and I love using the car to delight people. That, yep. There's more. That's Don's favorite part. He yeah. likes the mirrors flapping. The doors open up too, did he? Yep. <laughs> yep. The only thing that this show doesn't do is the trunk. Oh. Um, but on the newer, I'll explain to the kids in a minute. It will do the trunk. It's just not on this particular show. Oh, man. Go, Ruby! Go. Yeah, State Climate Office of NC from NCSU and they have a dedicated weather station here. Um, way cool. Now this is new. They did not have this building or these bathrooms out here the last time I was here. I gotta check it out and see what's inside. I mean I'm sure it's you know we're out here at the solar farm but Power to hold. You see the big trucks on this side of the road and everything. This is 
Duke Energy. This solar field you actually see behind us right here, this is my solar field. This is what we look after. This is where I come work every day. I work out in this field every day. Um, these are right here are some of the tools I work with every day that would keep me safe and keep me going home every day because what we work on is very dangerous out there. Electricity um, reaching up to 13,000 volts at some point. Um, and that's inside the field. And then once we go to the riser pole out there, we're reaching uh, 17K to 30,000 volts, um, which this is why I have these. These are my 600 volts of best gloves. Anytime 600 volts I'm working with something, I'm required to be wearing these. Huh. Anytime my voltages go up, my glove size goes up. Wow. Yes. Uh, go ahead. Um, 30,000 volts, I'm wearing the big boys. And they're, wow. Yeah, they're, they're tough to, uh, they're tough to, um, to work with. Imagine, yeah. imagine wearing that glove and having to operate this stick right here. That doesn't sound like fun. I'd be wanting to yeah. take the gloves off. All right. So what you got to do now, let me tell you a trick, you got to push it. So in case you didn't hear them, different gloves are for different um, voltages. And they get stiffer and thicker as they go. And it'll shoot a hook out of you right here. I don't know how you do that. He's not, he's not like on the ground. No, he's not. I can do it manless. I can do it on the ground. I can do it from wherever. I was like, that's great. That was very informational. Oh wow, they got a little covered area back behind the bathroom too. See, I didn't know all this was out here. What they did during COVID, they did some great stuff. EDF Renewables, powering the future with responsible and sustainable energy solutions. Hi. Hi. Now, is there any risk? Sharing the future today. Workforce Development, NCI. This is how much crap you gotta put in the pump just to be able to climb the ladder. And you clip into the ladder. New College up. Institute. So you're also supported. So if you wanna just hang out for a minute and just chill on the ladder, cause you're tired of climbing that 200 feet, then you're done. That's some serious climbing equipment there. So New College Institute offers classes as short as three weeks to gain some meaningful skills to be ready for a job interview. Pretty impressive. Manufacturer Standard Skills Institute. We are working with them for their journeyman and apprenticeship program right now. So we are looking at doing some apprenticeships with the state of Virginia through them. Well, there's lots of opportunities out there for high school kids if they'll just seize them. All kind of people with all kind of skill opportunities and offers. So this program associated with Roanoke Electric is forestry management, um, help you keep your land, help you learn how to use your land instead of just letting it sit there, make money to pay your taxes, that kind of thing. Alright, I was having so much fun with the vendors, I don't have time to go to the rest right now. Carolina Solar, Blue Ridge Power, Viadent, North Hospital, Halifax, DSS and Viva and somebody else. Um, maybe I'll have time to walk back over, but I'm not sure. But I bet Don's been entertaining kids by himself while I've been over here filming for the channel. So I, I, I wanna get back and help him. Well, Don can definitely hold his own, but I didn't, you know, normally we like for both of us to be around if we can. All right, go Ruby, go. We've got about 30 more minutes here, so we need to get as many kids over by the car as we can. Oh, it's just getting warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best part, seeing people's reactions to it. That's the best part. Now watch. Keep, keep your eye on the prize. <laughs> Go Ruby, go. Delight some more people today. It's a
are you show them? <laughs> <laughs> go Ruby go so this is where it all started with the very first visit up here with Zeb where we came up as just a Tesla owners um, meet up uh, drive thing and it's been a great relationship since then all right Ruby one more time today sweetie <laughs> so this car has uh, two motors and they're between the wheels front and the back so it's a dual motor when you see dual motor on the back of a Tesla that's what it means there's no gasoline, so there's no there's no conventional car oil. I will open the trunk, the front trunk after the light show and show you that it's only storage and there's no engine there. There's nothing in the front but storage space. Oh serious, I'll show you. <laughs> go Ruby go. done the light show like 75 times while I've had the car at least it's a five-year-old car with a hundred thousand miles just shy of a hundred thousand Ruby, go. Imagine taking your where? To the prom. To the prom, and, you know? Don and I did escort some people as their wedding getaway car. That'd be nice. Yeah. The dress fit in the back real pretty, you know? Trying to, trying to fly away. Yeah, right. The falcon wings. I can't believe I asked a couple of the kids today if they knew what SpaceX was and they didn't know what SpaceX was. How could they not know what SpaceX is? You don't know what SpaceX is either? The rockets that launched up to the International Space Station? Google it for me. Five minute investment. All right. They all wanted to see it move with nobody in it. <laughs> now, look, if you ever see a Tesla owner demoing Summon or at the Target parking lot, the car doesn't have a driver in it, be cool, right? Just watch it. I'm sure the driver would be willing to talk to you about it, but don't do stuff like, you know, don't do that. That wouldn't be cool, right? Because we're trying to make the future better and trying to help grow the technology, and we need for people to work with us on that some, right? Um, so I'll make it go backward now because it will go in both directions. <laughs> See how much it, it actually stopped on its own there because it seen the kids behind. It saw people. Yeah, it saw the people. Well, it was great. Anybody have any? Well, apparently we got really lucky because the rain totally stopped at the solar farm. But now that we're back on the road to Raleigh, the rain's back. But at least when they needed it to be dry, they were dry. Miss Mozine sent Johnny home a... Uh, Chick-fil-A box lunch and a couple of solar goodies and we talked about coming back again soon. It was a lot of fun. It always invigorates me and Don to start talking Tesla and electric vehicles and stuff with people. It's good. So we're back at the Halifax Supercharger and due to a software glitch, this is a brand new electric bus. Um, it doesn't have the right firmware to charge at the charge point charger. Um, it's brand spanking new, not in service yet. And it was supposed to be at the solar farm, but they can't get it over there because it needs charge. So we drove back by to see it. Safety liner C2 or something is what it says on the side of it. It's a full size bus. Yep, Safety Liner C2. Proterra. Made by Proterra. Alright, well that makes total sense then. 
So what they're probably going to do is bring the software on a laptop, update it here in the parking lot, and then charge it on the charger. But the kids didn't get to see it at the solar farm today. That was a little unfortunate. I'm looking for where you plug it in. So that's kind of neat. It's got the stop arm at the back, but not at the front. Let me see where you plug it in, Donnie. Came out of Los Angeles. Has a Thomas built um, and Julie charging. J O U L E Y. Okay, there's the charge port door. That's got to be what that is. And Julie does the charging. We're going to get out for a second. autopilot unavailable although it looks better now it looked like I had the bus running down the road beside me for a minute even though it was there's the bus back so I've got the shadow of the bus following me yeah that's gonna be great for autopilot between here and the school oh joy yeah she lets me do autopilot but she won't let me move over because she thinks the truck is the bus is there but it's not when other vehicles come past they knock the bus out of the way for a little while, but then the bus comes back. Got a monkey in front of us. So there's a X and a three in front of us. There goes the X. Goes the three. It's like this all the time in Raleigh now. Basically, there are no roads I go down and I don't have a meeting with another Tesla. Yeah, I don't know which city this is right here. It could be Raleigh, Garner, or Apex. <laughs> but we just dropped Johnny off at his friend's house to work on their project. It's due Monday, I believe. And um, they were going to be filming some video for this historical reenactment. Sounded like fun. And eating pizza sounded like fun. And uh, anyway, Don and I are headed to the house now. We got to come back this way around 6.30. Be over here around 7. So it's like it's about 30 minutes from the house, something like that. How many miles we go today, Donnie? Look at trips. Sure. So far? You might not be able to tell. It's just going to say since last charge, so that's not going to be all the miles. I guess you can't tell me. Uh, we've gone 116 since the last charge ride. I'm not going to be able to tell you. I have to look in Tesla Fi. Yep. So here we come one more to the new um, tollway. That's, that crane is at Lake Luger Road. That bus driver, he's going to lose his job for riding on the other side of the double yellow rot, double yellow lines going the wrong way on this street. Just being funny. It's over 50 miles now I've had the bus on my left. That's a very efficient electric bus. We're home and there's a big box. I think that might be my other pot. I was looking around for where Stripe and Morris were. They're under my tree. So I was all gun ho I was going to drive Ruby, get those extra miles on her. And Don and I were napping, and it's time to go get Johnny, and that's just not happening. So Don's driving Jules. Yeah, let's not. Oh, he looks. That's it. He, I see little bumps. Wow. Well, there was nobody behind me. They said yeah. you're supposed to go really slow. So she's driving. I got my hands on the wheel, I'm paying attention. Watch this. She just goes crazy right here. What's she doing, Beth? Oh, she, see, she's, well, 
well there's no road markings there to be clear because of the construction but right I couldn't really let her do because there's somebody behind me we've got Johnny with us now and we're headed back to the house we've got on and off light rain it's 65 out there I'm still not awake <laughs> technically two ball games here on the front fields. 